Lamar Jackson and John Harbaugh had some very interesting responses when asked about Lamar's physicality, and in some ways, they contradicted each other. All that and more on a bonus episode of Locked on Ravens. You are Locked on Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of Locked On Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Ostriker of Ravens Wire here with you on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for being here on this bonus episode of the show, making Locked On Ravens a part of your day and your first listen each and every day. Free and available for you all podcasting platforms that includes video form on YouTube, where you can like the video, subscribe to the channel, also in audio form. You can follow along wherever you get your podcast. Today's episode of Locked on Ravens bonus style is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked on NFL. Terms and conditions apply. We have five days a week of Ravens content for you here on Locked on Ravens Monday through Friday. Plus, obviously, like today, we have some bonus episode action for you. And we also have some bonus video action on Saturday here. Most Saturdays, we will have some form of keys to victory. So that'll be coming out probably right around 9 a.m. every Saturday. But sometimes we will have bonus episodes as well like this one. And I wanted to talk about this at some point during the week, but there was just no time. And so, hence it being a bonus episode where you can kind of go back and talk about topics that might not have had the full time to discuss during the week. And that today is some of John Harbaugh and Lamar Jackson's comments about Lamar's physicality, the sustainability of of him getting all these carries per game, stuff we did touch on here and there throughout the week. It's not like we didn't talk about it at all, but I wanted to get on here, do maybe a shorter type bonus episode and, and dive into what the comments were. Because in some ways, Lamar Jackson and John Harbaugh, you know, they, they were saying the same thing, but in others, there were definitely some differing comments, I guess some dueling comments from the two. And the way that John Harbaugh even presented his, I think for some Ravens fans made them a little worried, at least from what I saw on, on social media there. So we're going to be talking about all of that. And then also we'll dive into some injury updates. We had a scary one, Nate Wiggins. We'll talk about that. Kyle Van Noy though, really good news for him as we head in to week two. Then finally, We'll do a day before type of breakdown again for those who are new to the channel might not know. We are going to have our first game day episode tomorrow, so that'll come out 6 a.m. tomorrow. We'll be diving into everything to get you ready for the Ravens and Raiders game in week two. So if you're pre-gaming for the game, you have stuff going on, you're getting ready for it, be sure to have this show on in the background getting you ready for everything that is going to happen. So let's dive into these comments as... I think a big topic coming out of Thursday night's game was definitely Lamar Jackson's workload. 16 carries in the game overall. And look, not all of his carries were designed runs. He obviously, I thought he had a pretty good feel for the game overall, if I'm being honest. You know, was able to see things, survey the field, go through his reads. If there wasn't anything there, he felt like there was a lane. He ended up taking it. And I was honestly pretty impressed overall with his game flow in game sets in that game. But, obviously, there was a little bit of an added physicality element. Lamar definitely wanted that game badly. It was lower in his shoulder, getting everybody pumped up. And everybody, I mean, Nick Moore on the Ryan Rifkin Show said that that was something that fired everybody up on the sideline. You could kind of tell there was some extra bounce to his step, especially, you know, watching him and just how badly he wanted it. So, Lamar was asked about it. It was The question, you know, was if running the ball 16 times, is sustainable throughout the year. And he said, I don't know, but I'm not trying to find out. We've got Derrick Henry. We've got Justice Hill. Those guys that are going to do whatever it takes to win. And in that type of game, sometimes you have to do what you have to do. You got to do what you got to do. So this kind of tells me, that look, Lamar will do anything to win, right? Lamar is somebody that's uber competitive. He wants to win. There, There is obviously a lot of sacrifice that's involved in that. And for Lamar, Look, I don't think he wants to run 16 times a game. I mean, obviously, if he has to do it in a game, he will, right? If, if there are lanes, he will take them. If there are opportunities, he's not going to turn those down. He's not somebody that's going to do that. He's going to do what's best for the team, what's best in that moment. But 
I think based off of his response saying he's not trying to find out if that's sustainable, that's not the workload, especially him going in there and mentioning Derrick Henry, Justice Hill. I mean, he didn't mention Keaton Mitchell because he's not in you know the Ravens' plans right now. He will be when he comes back. But those are guys that can help take that workload off of Lamar. It can help him take that Superman cape off because I think that's part of the reason why you brought in Derrick Henry is to alleviate some of that pressure, alleviate that off of Lamar Jackson. And I know that Harbaugh's comments about you know, Henry not getting 30 carries a game and they didn't bring him in there to, to get him 30 carries per game. We had a conversation about that as well. And I think that, again, 30 carries, it's probably a bit much for Derrick Henry. I don't think you want to use him that much, but if you brought him in to be a, be a platoon member with Justice Hill, probably shouldn't have brought him in in the first place. I mean, yeah, you have to use Derrick Henry as a bell cow guy. Now, obviously, in that Chiefs game, there was game flow that went away from them. Wish they would have established a run a little earlier personally, especially after that first drive. But once it kind of got away from them, it got away from them. And that's why Derrick Henry had the snap share he did and why Justice Hill had the snap share he did. I personally don't think that's going to be the case. I do think the Ravens will use Derrick Henry as he is supposed to be utilized, which is as a bell cow running back. But that doesn't mean 30 carries a game. I think that means anywhere from 18 to 22 of game flows really favoring you. You got maybe 25, 26 carries. It'd be pretty funny, though, honestly, if the Ravens gave him 30 carries tomorrow after those comments <laughs> and then the game flow kind of goes that way. But, you know, I think Lamar is, yes, he, he will take those lanes. It's a big part of his game. His ability with his legs is a, a part of what makes him a dual threat quarterback, right? Dual threat, arm and legs. That's what the dual threat definition is. So it's a big part of what he does. But obviously, I think in a general 16, you know, 17 game season, right, you're doing everything and, and you have a, a long year ahead of you. I think Lamar understands that, you know, you're, he's not going to be lowering his shoulder into everybody and, you know, says he feels great. And that's kind of the thing where it, it makes sense, right? You're like, okay, Lamar doesn't want to find out. You know, wants to obviously do what's best for his body, but then if there's an opportunity, he'll take it. John Harbaugh was asked about it. Well, actually, Lamar, hold on. Lamar had a couple of other things to say about it as well. You know, he was asked what went through his head when he decided to lower his shoulder instead of avoiding the contact, said he's just playing football. There's nothing really going through his head at that point. He didn't want to get hit going to the sideline. Said that, you know, he's gotten to the sideline, he's gotten out, somebody hits him. So he said, I'd rather hit you before you hit me. That's the type of mindset that he had there and, you know, said that it's a little competitive spirit for him. He likes that. So again, there, there was good. I think there might be a little more of that this season, despite him, obviously the big topic was the body transformation for Lamar, but there is that element of it as well. And John Harbaugh was asked about it and said that he was comfortable with physical football all around. So the, the full quote said, Quote, I'm comfortable with the physical football team across the board, whatever it takes in a given situation to try to find a way to make a play and win the game with every single one of our guys competing at the highest level to do whatever they can to play their best football, put our best foot forward and try to win a play, win a series and win a game. That's what we're all here for. And then there was a follow up question to that. And a reporter asked, is there a fine line between that and also and then he got cut off right as he was saying protecting or protection obviously most likely talking about the protection of Lamar Jackson and John Harbaugh cut him off and said, we don't live in that world of fine lines. We live in the world of competing, going out there and doing the best that you can. There are no lines being drawn. The only lines that we have are the lines on the field, the sidelines, goal line, the back end line. And then he ended up joking about likely and, and his toe saying, okay, that was a big one. That was a big line that was really important in the last game, but said those other fine lines that you're talking about. I'm not even aware of those. I don't know what those are. So John Harbaugh, obviously he doesn't, obviously he is, Lamar is a guy that, you know, he, he cares about Lamar's important to him, but look, he, he wants to win. Both those guys want to win. And I, I could definitely tell the competitive spirit coming through on both of those answers, but certainly does contradict a little bit of what Lamar said. So John Harbaugh is like, Hey, you know what? There, there are no fine lines. We don't live in that world. We live in the world of competing. And Lamar is kind of like, yeah, look, I'll do what it takes to win. But I'm also not trying to find out what, you know, a full season there looks like. So 
I, I thought that they were similar in some senses, but I don't necessarily from their answers, again, they could be on the same page and their answers are just a little different, but from their answers, man, felt like there, uh, there, there was a little contradiction going on and, and maybe a little bit of different viewpoints. So look, I, I don't doubt that LeBron's going to go out there and look, if there's a lane, he's going to take it. If there's an opportunity. He's going to take it. They're going to run him this season. And that's a big part of what they should do. But 16 times, it's not about Lamar. This is about any quarterback, right? Any quarterback runs the ball 16 times per game. That gets you like 272 carries in a season, I think. That puts you up near the top of just carries in general. And I think that for a quarterback, you'd have to get out of bounds every single time here because any quarterback, Lamar, Mahomes, Burrow, Allen, Herbert, Hurts, whoever you want to throw in this conversation, the more you get hit, the more you get sacked. And anytime you take a hit, there is more chance that you get injured, right? This is not about Lamar. Oh, his play style is not sustainable. We're past that argument. And I said that before. But again, I think this is week one was just a game that, you know, they wanted. And because of that, I think Lamar ran a little more. I don't necessarily expect him to run 16 times per game, but. John Harbaugh and Lamar Jackson, different and similar responses at the same time. Coming up, we'll talk about some injury updates for the Ravens, Nate Wiggins, Cal Van Noy, and a lot more. Stay tuned. Plenty to talk about on Lockdown Ravens. First, this show is brought to you by LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. So for me, I've had a ton of great experiences over on LinkedIn finding jobs, networking, connecting. LinkedIn has it all. And LinkedIn is just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job. Might be open to the perfect role in a given month. Over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 87% of small businesses are going to qualify a candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Push your job for free on LinkedIn.com slash lockdown NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash lockdown NFL to push your job for free terms and conditions apply. And the show is brought to you by FanDuel. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And I love going on FanDuel, seeing all they have to offer. We have something a little different for you now through September 22nd. All FanDuel customers can bet $5. You get a three week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with the YouTube TV base plan, they'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon at a market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment. You can cancel any time. So for the Ravens and Raiders game, the Ravens opened up as nine and a half point favorites. They have now moved down to eight and a half point favorites. So if you like that line, head over to FanDuel. Just visit FanDuel.com. Download America's number one sports book. We return our second segment, Locked on Ravens. Kevin Ostriker still here with you on this Saturday bonus edition of the show. Really appreciate everybody for tuning in today, making Locked on Ravens a part of your day, your first listen each and every day. And we have, again, a bunch of really exciting weekend content for you this season. We'll have Keys to Victory coming out mostly every Saturday. That'll come out probably 9 a.m.-ish Eastern time. That'll be a shorter video kind of recapping crossover Thursday, diving into Keys to Victory for both teams for that upcoming Sunday matchup. We'll have some bonus episodes like this one on Saturday, probably not every single Saturday, but we, we will when there's stuff to talk about. And then obviously game day episodes on Sundays. We'll have that at 6 a.m. So again, you're, you're getting ready for the game. Be sure to keep us on here on Locked on Ravens. But let's talk about the injury updates for the Ravens. As usually, you know, we don't get to talk about the injury report, the final one at least, on the regular weekday episodes of Locked on Ravens because we put this out on Friday morning. So the final injury report comes out Friday afternoon. And for the Ravens, a little bit of a surprise. Kyle Van Noy returned to practice for the Ravens after suffering an orbital fracture against the Chiefs in week one. Obviously, there's quite a bit of controversy about everything that went down and happened with Van Noy's treatment and everything else that kind of happened there. But man, Van Noy could potentially play. He said he's optimistic. About playing, that obviously doesn't mean he's going to play, but I thought he was going to be out for a while. But maybe he only misses this week, and, and we'll see. But Van Noy ended up being a limited participant in this practice on Friday. Now, a little scary injury update for the Ravens is Nate Wiggins, John Harbaugh, ended up saying was in a car crash, and he is fine, first of all. John Harbaugh wanted to make that clear. But... 
He's not going to be out there on Sunday. And on the injury report, he is listed as out with neck slash concussion. So really scary. According to Jess Rebeck and kind of everything else, this is the fourth car crash the Ravens have had this month and in, in the last month where obviously Mark Andrews, we talked about that. Josh Ross, uh, Kyle Van Noy is what Jeff said. And, and also now Nate Wiggins. And Jeff said, those are just the ones we know about. So crazy and, and scary situation. Again, very glad John Harbaugh here says Nate Wiggins is fine. So very glad he is, but you know, he he's fine. He's healthy. He's not going to be able to play is what John Harbaugh ended up saying there. So, Harbaugh was asked a little about it, said that he didn't know if it was a week to week thing or, you know, what the, what the timeline was and, you know, he doesn't have an answer for it. So we don't know what the timeline on Wiggins and his injury is. Obviously others will have to step up in his absence. Uh, He didn't play a ton in, in week one compared to what we thought, but he is not going to be out there for the game. So guys like Jalen Armour Davis and other players as well will have to step up in his absence Kyle Noy, John Harbaugh was asked about him too. To the, you know, just they'll have to see how he responds and how he feels if he can go. I don't know if they'll bring somebody up from the practice squad at that position or not. I would anticipate they probably bring up a corner because of Nate Wiggins. I would probably think that is one of the positions they would bring up. And then a running back, I would assume maybe John Kelly again is the other way that they would go with their other practice squad spots. But the injury report after those two guys is, you know, there's, there's not really a ton outside of that. Roquan Smith is not even listed on the injury report. He practiced in full the last two days, didn't practice. Well, he was limited, excuse me, on Wednesday with a shoulder injury. And he's Isaac is doubtful, limited all three days. So getting back up, but if Van Noy is out and Isaac is out, I would maybe anticipate them bringing up another guy off the practice squad to add depth to that position. You have Adafi Owe, you have David Ajabo, Tavius Robinson, but maybe a Joe Evans plays into factor there, and you can maybe have him come on special teams and play him in multiple other roles. Also, Malik Harrison will probably be playing on the outside as well in the absence of if Van, well, Van Noy doesn't play, the absence of Kyle Van Noy there. But just, again, hoping that the Ravens can stay as healthy as possible and they'll be able to hopefully, you know, knock on wood here. There you hear it. Come out of the week two game unscathed. So I, I, a very, I guess, positive development for Kyle Van Noy. Uh, a scary one for Nate Wiggins with Van Noy. I mean, I, I, I'm no doctor, obviously. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to put out there that I am because I'm not. But you know, based off of the timelines that you know I, I initially looked at. The orbital fractures, there are, you know, there, there are variations of it, right? So maybe Van Noyes is, is on the smaller side there, but usually it, t- it takes a few weeks to a few months, apparently, for these things to heal. So maybe he plays with a mask on, you know, it'd be, it'd be wild. He, he came out maybe with the, the Terrell Suggs mask that he had on, you know, do the Bane thing or whatever. And then he has like a protective mask he wears. We'll see. I mean, it'd kind of be hard to fit that under a helmet, if we're being honest, but may- maybe there's some way, shape, or form you can do it. So, yeah, a couple of, a couple of injury updates for the Ravens ahead of week two. Coming up, though, in the final part of the show, we're going to be talking about a day before breakdown, how the Ravens can win, and a lot more. Stay tuned, plenty to talk about a lockdown, Ravens. First, the show is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Prize Picks is the easiest, most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. So, one Caleb Williams passing yard gets you one win on Prize Picks every week in September. That's right, only one yard gets you an automatic win every football weekend in September. Four weeks of free W's. Don't miss this deal on Prize Picks because it's gone when September ends. Plus, Prize Picks puts their members first, so all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. When my picks it, I can get my money in as quick as 15 minutes. So for this Ravens and Raiders game, if you want to pick Zay Flowers more on his receiving yards, as they are likely, right? He had a great game in week one. More on his receiving yards, too. You could be in a good spot on Prize Picks. Download the Prize Picks app today and use code Lockdown NFL and get $50 instantly when you play $5. Let's go Lockdown NFL on Prize Picks. Is at $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks run your game. 
We're back. Our final segment of Locked On Ravens. Kevin Ostraker still here with you on the Saturday bonus edition of the show. Appreciate everybody for being here today and making us a part of your day. Your first listen each and every day here on Locked On Ravens. You have a friend or a family member who's a Ravens fan. They want some daily Ravens coverage. Be sure to send them over our way. Plus, if you're an everyday, I really appreciate your consistent support on this show. If you're new to the channel, welcome in. Hopefully, you stay a while. And if you're somewhere in the middle, welcome back in to the show. Now, Ravens and Raiders kick off tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern time in Baltimore. Should be, I think, a pretty exciting game. I do predict the Ravens will win this one. My final score prediction, set it on the crossover episode. 31 to 17 is where I am going with that one. But I, I think there are multiple different ways this could go. I think the Ravens could easily blow out the Raiders in 20, 30 point fashion. This also could be an ugly win for the Ravens, which a win is a win, but I don't think it would make you feel great considering, you know, all the circumstances, but I, you got to establish the run. First of all, we'll talk about this definitely tomorrow on the game day episode too, but Derrick Henry is the key X factor here. The chiefs, you know, they're a team that I wish in week one, the Ravens, like I said earlier, would have established the run against a little bit sooner in that game and more consistently early in that game. I think you have an opportunity to do that here in week two against the Raiders. The front for Las Vegas, they have some guys. Christian Wilkins, Adam Butler, Max Crosby, another tough test for this offensive line, and it does all start up front. I've been very consistent in saying that over the course of hosting the show. And especially this season, when you're still trying to get acclimated. Now, I do expect a lot of things to just look a little better this week. Week one, Ravens don't play their starters in the preseason and stuff like that. It can it can be tough, just the, the gelling, the continuity. And I think that that is very big for an offensive line that didn't have Tyler Linderbaum for most of training camp. They were rotating guys in and out for the majority of the of the few weeks of, of camp. That's something that can mess with you a little bit in terms of timing. And as they play more together, the hope obviously, and the natural progression, if everything goes well, is that you start to be familiar with the person next to you because there is a, an element, especially even like Linderbaum and Stanley themselves, like Stanley looked great in week one. He looked healthy. Linderbaum looked great, but there's an added element of, Oh, well, Kevin Zeitler's not over on that right side anymore. Oh, well, you know, a vet and John Simpson isn't sandwiched in between Stanley and, and Linda Baum anymore. It's, it's younger players. So I expect that to look better. Same thing defensively. We saw some miscommunications, some questionable personnel usage from Zach Orr. It, it's just getting the feel of the game. And Zach Orr said that, you know, what was the biggest thing he took away from the week one game? He said, just keep it simple. Just keep it simple. And, and I agree with him. I think that's a really big point. You don't have to overthink. You, you don't have to outsmart yourself if you're Zach Orr. Tough test in week one against Kansas City for everybody. It's a good game. I think I think both teams, they definitely felt a lot of you know intensity, physicality. It was, it was all of that. But week two, you can't fall asleep here. You, you cannot fall asleep because we know that the Ravens sometimes do like to play down to their competition a little bit. There are instances, especially last year, you want to go back and look at those losses, right? The Colts game, Gardner Minshew started that game. He's the Raiders starter. Well, last year it was the Colts starter. And Kyle Hamilton had three sacks in the first half of that game. Looked like they were well on their way. But the Colts just made that game ugly enough to where it came down to a couple of Ravens mistakes at the end. That Pittsburgh game, seven drops plus for receivers. And... The, the Steelers, again, just made that game ugly enough. And those those AFC North games always are, right? But made that game ugly enough to where the Ravens just, you know, the, the mistakes were too much. And that's kind of how, you know, if, if you're not up to Baltimore's level talent-wise in, in a lot of positions, that's the best way to win the game is just make it ugly. Just make it an ugly game. And I think that's – probably your best shot of winning. So I expect the Raiders to try to do stuff along those lines. I would expect Baltimore to try to take out the run game for Las Vegas early with Samir White and Alexander Madison, force them to be one dimensional, take Devontae Adams out and make guys like Jacoby Myers, Brock Bowers beat you. That's the formula. Take away the offense's best weapon and make the other guys beat you. It's what Kansas city did in week one, which is why I do expect a big bounce back game from Mark Andrews and a more balanced target share and target script 
for Andrews and Isaiah likely. So should be a fun and exciting game. And again, home opener for the Ravens always has that extra juice. Football's back in Baltimore for another season, and it is incredible. That's all I have for you here today, though, on this episode of Locked on Ravens bonus edition. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel in video form on YouTube, and also follow along in audio form. We'll be back here tomorrow for a game day episode, getting you ready for Ravens and Raiders in week two. Stay tuned. I'll see you right back here tomorrow on Locked on Ravens.